All right, everybody, welcome in. My name is Joe, and we're going to play some chess. So I've got the white pieces this time. I'm going to go ahead and lead off with the ready opening, uh, knight to f3. We know it's technically not the ready opening, but here, this is now the officially the true ready opening. It could simply transition us into a uh, queen's gambit. If I remember correctly, I don't have to do anything about this pawn just yet. If he pushes, we just grab and move on with life. In fact, if he pushes, I grab with the knight and move on with life. Um, yeah, let's just grab be happy. Do I have that covered? He's got it three times. I only have it twice. Eh, it would be three times once I put my... So, one, two, three, one, two, three. We're all fat, dumb, and happy. Uh, do I want an isolated queen's pawn? Do I want an isolated queen pawn? Um, no. Now we get to bring our other pieces into the game and just see how it goes from here. Excuse me, caught that one. So the idea being that um, By grabbing with the um, the pawn to start with, it's a defended pawn now. My opponent is attacking it, yes, I understand that. Um, but um, there's really not a lot of opportunities for my opponent to do anything about it. Let's just go ahead and castle. Everything is defended. And if my opponent grabs here, Let's see here. Let me think for a second. Um, what is this queen's job? Is the queen still needed on this pawn? There's one attacker on the pawn only. I've got it defended twice. So I'm fine. So if the queen has to rotate here, that's fine. Is there anything else we could do in the process? Uh, pushing this pawn, does that do anything? Okay, I could stick this knight here. Now just hear me out for a second. We are threatening the queen, so my opponent needs to do something about that. Probably grab with the knight, and then I grab with the bishop, and then the bishop defends the knight. Let's do that. Let's try that little little shindig, right? Now obviously if my opponent grabs, I'll grab back with the, knight, with the queen. But that's only possible because this pin no longer exists. Now, that does mean that if my opponent was going to trade off his bishop for my knight, I can no longer um, have a pawn chain in the center of the board. So now we are going to live with an isolated queen's pawn. But now this is defended. Ooh, interesting maneuver. Something I did not take into consideration. Give me a second here. Oh, man, I would love to take advantage of this. This is technically undefended right now. I could trade it away or I could retreat it. Uh, or I could do neither, I could defend it. Am I walking into a pin? No. Takes, takes, 
takes. I could still take this way. Yeah, I think this is okay. Now notice the bishop is defended, so trading off that way is not going to do anything for me at this point in time. There's a possibility of grabbing a pawn here, but that's not really that exciting right now. This bishop is undefended, and I really need to do some, or insufficiently defended. The queen is not a great defender because there's a lot you can do to drive the queen away. But that right there takes care of that. Ah, let me drop a pawn here. Can we do anything about this? Takes, takes with the rook. Still can't get access to this. Hmm. I really want to keep these bishops alive. All right, so we're still looking at this again. Is there any way we can get to where we can defend that at the same time? No, we can't. Um, we are threatening to take a pawn back. Just want to make sure I'm not getting forked in the process. We have to take. Now the queen can't come infiltrate this way. Making some space, putting our bishop on a on a diagonal that's very very um, important for us. And unfortunately, my opponent missed. In fact, I wonder if I just had straight up checkmate. Now, nah, because he could have slid back. Um, speaking, of, speaking of sliding back, um, do I just grab and let my opponent grab? This is under attack. Ah, eh, black resigned. Well, that was a fast one, guys. Let's give a good game well played to my opponent. Um, yeah, I think, I think he just missed. I think they just missed the, um, Right here, I'm wondering what would happen if I had played here. Notice the only thing my opponent can do is slide this way. This is not checkmate. Could force a draw. Obviously he can't come this way because he drops the bishop, so he'd either have to go back or come in front of the queen. Not sure. Let's take a look at the analysis here and see what um, better moves would have been. Yeah, my rook over was a was a poor man's move. Yeah, I I dropped a rook. That was a mistake. So completely missed this. Completely missed it. I mean, just absolutely blindsided. Um. Rook over. He can defend with the bishop. But now does this become a threat? No, because the now king can still come forward. Yeah, I don't see it yet. And I can't believe I moved so fast. I had plenty of time. I don't know why I moved so fast on this rook move. I mean, look, I didn't even think. I didn't even think for the full five seconds. I should have taken an opportunity at this point in time and just looked at, at my options, but I just moved without thinking. 
Yeah, I should have grabbed here. Oh well. But I went this way, my opponent missed it, and just dropped the full queen. Um, yeah, I mean, a queen plus no queen. This is defended, so my opponent would have to move it. And then we threaten. Weird game, guys. All right, let's go back to the very beginning. So let's turn this off. Let's turn the opening explorer on. So we start with knight f3, then d5, and then move into c4. So this is the true ready opening. And at this point, yeah, it looks like... Um, Knight to a3, that's such an odd move. I guess the idea is to try to capture back and still fee and keto. This works. Um, I mean, this works, but it doesn't really do anything, and it just has the queen out early. So you've, you've now overly exposed your queen for not a lot of development. You know, you're just getting a pawn back, which you can get that pawn back any number of ways. But yeah, so e3 is the correct move here, so I'm happy about that. And then bishop captures, go ahead and grab, is the correct move, so I'm happy about that. And then the knight to c3, I played d4 right away. Not the world's strongest move, apparently. Let's look at the engine, what the engine says. Uh, engine, <laughs> take, scratch that, d4 is the strongest move by the engine. So we did play the strongest engine move. And then, yeah, the engine here says e-capturing is better. Um, you could force a queen trade, but man, that seems... I don't know. I'm just clicking through moves now. Yeah, it doesn't really seem like a, an advantage either way. But, all right, so we got, this is how the position developed into. I took back with the singular pawn. Um, yes, it opens up in front of my king, but it does, it is a, 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 a defended pawn. I mean, we read all of this correctly, so I'm happy about that. Castle. My opponent came for this attack. And look at that. The engine is saying that no, nope, not yet, yeah. Engine one of the one of the moves is knight to d5. One of the moves is. Not the top engine move, but one of the moves. Yeah, just just force this trade. Um, rook to e1 right now. Knight to d5 is what I played. It was the fourth best move, but still not great. We're still following along. It's funny, we're still following along with an actual um, existing game. And then knight captures, bishop captures. Yeah, castling right into. That was, that was an interesting move, that one that I didn't expect. And so here, I, at this point in time, I played queen to b3. And looking at the engine's top recommendations, it's not a recommended move. Um, one of the things I like to do sometimes is turn on this threat analysis. And sometimes it can show us what your opponents, if you do nothing and they get two turns in a row, essentially, what can they, what can they accomplish with that? In this case, our bishop's hanging. Now, the good news is we correctly identified the threat. Retreating it, exchanging. Oh, it is defended. Oh, I ah. I thought this wasn't defended, and I thought my opponent could grab there, and then ah, uh, it was defended by the knight the whole time. Yep, 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 yep. I just spotted it too, too little, too late. And then wow, engine hates this. Absolutely hates this move because this comes with an attack. The knight to a5 comes with an attack. The bishop is still defended, so the queen has to move. And then you drop the, um, yeah, and then 
the knight takes care of both those squares, so you drop, end up dropping the bishop. Okay, so did not notice that at all. Knight forks every time are the death of me. Why can't I take here? Why is this good for white? Why is this good for white? Oh, because we're flat out, straight up threatening checkmate. The bishop has to move, and the bishop can't defend checkmate. So if it goes anywhere, it's immediately... That's well, not checkmate, no. No, 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 it's not checkmate. Because the rooks, I don't, I don't, I don't get why this would be good um, for white at all. I mean, look at look at the advantage this says that white has. A three point, three and a half point swing. Well, we know what that that threat is, but when we capture here, white is threatening just this outside pawn. So grabs. A3 is the only thing that maintains advantage. Big whoop, why doesn't the bishop just move? Why can't why can't the bishop just move in this circumstance? For a pawn? But now the queen moves. Oh, oh my, checkmate and two on the board. That's what I didn't notice at all. So there is a mate threat on the board. Because with the rook cutting off the king, okay, because the rook cuts off the king, so the king would have to go backwards behind the queen and then you can back rank checkmate. But if the queen comes that way, then it's checkmate in one right away. And you do it with the bishop because the queen needs to cut the king off from coming. If you do it this way, then the king walks backwards. Same thing. You need the uh, bishop up so that the, that's cut off and the rook cuts off. Wow. See, this is what we talk about studying checkmate patterns because I would not have caught this on my own, that the bishop is the one delivering checkmate. And because we've chased the king out to the center of the board, that's the ma massive advantage. The best move for... We can straight up give up the queen. Oh no, it's, it's defended, never mind, it's defended. And then I guess we just stack up. Hmm, interesting. Would not have guessed that at all, friends. All right, so this was a ready um, that transposed into kind of like a queen's gambit accepted, but not really. Um, and then this, this exchange in the middle, I was not prepared for. I mean, I, I guess I, I didn't expect to see it. Um, but I think the real unfortunate bit here was... Um, Number one, I didn't spot this castle with immediate pressure on the bishop. Uh, I assume my opponent would have to come this way. And then I'd, I, in that case, I would have been happy to drop my bishop back um, to keep the pressure along that diagonal. But castling this way means I want to keep the pressure going this way now to the, to the queen side. And so dropping the bishop back probably still would have been a good move. Two attackers, two defenders. Hmm. Hmm. I have to be careful of the alignment issue. Okay. 
Um, but anyway, yeah, we got into a position that, woof, this was a big, ugly one. It looks like our, our bishop is, is going to fall in no matter what here. So that was a huge mistake on my part, not seeing the knight fork. I just I have a hard time with him. So huge mistake on my part. My opponent gave me the initiative back. I didn't spot this at all. And I'm I'm really I'm really uh, uh, mad. Number one, I can't believe I cannot believe this sequence of events. This and this were on the table, and I chose the absolute worst move. I mean, I just drop a rook, you know. So funny enough, that's not even the best move. But you take. Oh, I guess they take back, and defend this outside pawn at the same time. Interesting. But now we can get over here. Okay. Yeah, that could get weird. That could get really weird. Wild game, guys. Wild game. Um, I, I, I got lucky in that one. Uh, plain and simple, that's what it boils down to, is I just got lucky. We played, well, look, we played well. We played very, very well. Right to this point, uh, we missed the knight fork. I'm not going to complain too much about that, because that's just a weakness of mine that uh, I'll always get... Knight fork. It's one of the reasons why when I play, a lot of times you'll see me look for ways to get rid of the knights early, just so I don't have to deal with them. Um, but then this sequence of events right here, I'm mad at myself. I can't believe that I put my rook in danger and missed the free, um, the free pawn with the threat on the king. And then unfortunately my opponent just dropped. And that was that. So thanks for sticking with me. We'll try to get another one and see how it goes. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.